first off today, the lesson is? We're talking about significant figures today. This is Mr. Eskew with Mr. Atkins. And we're going to have a lesson where you're going to create a foldable so you understand the rules for significant figures. And once again, I really don't get what's significant about a figure. Eskew's here to guide me. We'll find out. Now, take a moment, read this, and just look and, and see what the, the conundrum is. Now, please forgive the little error there, but take a look at that. I thought it was quite comical. And we all do. So what's so significant about that? And then looking at, we don't know the whole story, the big picture. So what is behind that picture? Let's start taking a look at some numbers and see if we can decide what is so important. Now, the first number we're going to look at. What do you see? There are certain, certain numbers in here that are significant, and we're going to develop a graphic that shows it to you. But to get a, the overall effect, let's take a look at this next slide. Looking at the first part here, we have numbers in the front. We have zeros in the front. We have some numbers surrounding zeros. And here at the end we even have some trailing zeros. So when we get done with our graphic organizer, we're going to understand what numbers are significant and what numbers aren't. You know, during the course of chemistry this year, you're going to be making a lot of measurements and where you round on the calculator is up to you. It, the calculator will never do it for you. So we have to establish these rules and we have to learn them now and we have to apply them from now to the end of June. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a, a graphic organizer. So get out uh, some of the, the, the paper that's been left around the room. And you want to make a hot dog fold and then a hamburger fold and you'll get this diamond. We've made these before in most Mr. Atkins in my class, so there shouldn't be any problem. Let's get that done. All right, and now that you've got that finished, well, you, you want to put in your diamond, sig figs. And you're going to hear Mr. Atkins and myself refer to sig figs frequently through the year. And uh, it, it becomes real important that we, we practice now, learn our rules now, and apply them throughout the year. And we're going to take, we're going to, we've got four quadrants we're going to deal with. The first quadrant up in our top left-hand corner we're going to call quadrant A. And that's going to be the first one we're going to write in right now. So we're going to take care of that. Expand it. Okay, we've got our quadrant A. Let's make this a little bigger here so I can write on it so you can see it and I can type in. So we're dealing with just this quadrant up here. So the first thing we're going to deal with, I like to do it a little bit more comical than Mr. Eskew. So I have a title for mine that I like to call I Need a Number, Not a Zero. Because I have to I'd like to buy something one of these days. It might be good. Could be important. So let's take a look at what the real definition is here. Okay, and the real definition is, is, is simply this. All non-zero numbers are significant. Can't get enough periods at the end of that. That is important. Are we on pause? No. Nope. Oh, okay. What we need to do is... The examples are... Uh, that's numbers like... Uh, oh, hey, hang on, guys. My mistake. Uh, let's say number 613. How many sig figs in there? There's going to be... And you're going to see Mr. Atkins and myself actually putting checks above them like that to indicate the significance of them. There's three significant figures there. Uh, a number uh, such as 0 0.1429. You're going to see me go, since they're all non-zero digits or numbers, 
they are all significant. And sometimes you'll see us actually indicate that by putting a four or however many sig sig figs are there. On the All right, so here we go. We're getting ready to go to the next quadrant. So let's get it over here to where we can write in it. And this is going to be quadrant B. So we all know we're in the top right hand corner now. Just to let you know, once again, we're trying to come up with something catchy for you. Calling these the tweeners. I mean, I, that's our second category that we're going to deal with. All right, guys, the tweeners will be simply this. Zeros, just like you're seeing here, located between non-zero digits, are significant. Examples could be, well, let me put some things down here, uh, say 5004. You clearly have uh, two zeros that are between non-zero digits. Consequently, in this particular numerical value, there are four significant figures. Let's do uh, something as simple as, as this, say 602. Then here, this is significant because of the tweener rule, and then Mr. Atkins tweener rule, and then we will have the non-zero digits being significant. So consequently, there are three significant figures in, in that value. All right, so we're, we've, got, we've got A and B done, so let's zoom out here. Let's get down to this other corner. In the bottom left hand corner, we're going to call quadrant C for our graphic organizer. Once again, we've got a little silly name, because I like silly names. We've got the wagging tails for this category. All right, guys, the rule was simply this. Trailing zeros are significant if the number contains a decimal point. By way of example, let's say that we have, uh, I don't know, 5.5. 640. That should be an O. Can we all agree that in this number there is a trailing zero? There is a decimal point. Consequently, because of rule in our first quadrant, uh, non zero digits, they all count. And now we're in our, our C quadrant, we have the fourth value. All right, here's another example. Let's take this number. Okay, can we agree those are trailing zeros? And because of that, we're going to count them as significant. And because of our previous rules, we're going to count those significant. We have five. And if we take one more example, let me just do this one. Okay, what do you think now? Trailing zeros, but there is no stated zero. There's no, st I mean, I'm sorry, no stated decimal. It's not there. So when we actually do this, there's only two sig figs. Now, guys, these have to be there. There's a huge difference between $12 and $12,000. You have to have them there. But in terms of what we're going to be doing in class, they are not considered a significant figure. Okay, folks, we got one quadrant left. Let's see if we can get over to it. Here we go. All right, now, we're in quadrant D, the last one. Sweet. Looking at this, of course, we got to come up with another name. we got it to ooze. And you'll find out why in just a second. All right, guys, one last rule is simply this. Leading zeros are never significant. You might want to perceive them as they're simply placeholders. For example, if we had 0 0.0046, in this case, we have right here nothing more than leading zeros. They have to be there, but they are not significant. So this number only has these two significant figures. Uh, something as... as and I know this is sort of strange, but look, hang on. Zero, 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 four, six. It's the same scenario. These are simply leading zeros. They're placeholders, and they are not significant. So when you count them, there would be two sig figs. That's our rules, guys, for significant figures. And what's going to happen tomorrow when you walk into class there will be some problems that you and I will work, you know, as we work our group work, we'll sit down and make sure that we can apply these rules to the SIG fix. 
Okay, so let's see what this final final product looks like. And there is the graphic organizer that you should have completed. It should probably be neater than that, but it'll be all right. Just try to remember. I need a I need a number, not a zero. Uh, it's, if it's between, it's important. If you're going to wag a tail, you got to have a decimal point. And any oohs are not the best place to be. And if you've watched Doctor Who, remember the oohs. You'll get that later.